Hey everybody, it's Chris Bergstrom coming back at you with another video. Um, today, I just wanted to share some of my thoughts on this Squire Jazzmaster that I ended up uh, pretty much heavily modifying and close as I could turn it into an actual Jazzmaster. So um, I'll tell you what I did to the guitar and then we'll go ahead and get some sound clips in. So what I actually started with was I changed out the electronics, I changed the pickups, I put 1965 um, Jazzmaster Fender pickups. I went on eBay and bought a hand-wired, nice quality wiring harness for this with the oil caps and that type of thing. And then what I ended up doing was I changed the one meg pots out to 500k audio taper pots because I didn't like the ice pickiness of the guitar after I put the, uh, the new pickups and everything in it. I did put a mastery bridge on here. I almost forgot the name of it. Um, and also I put a Vibramate with a Bigsby on it. Now, the other things that I did was I went ahead and I sanded the headstock because I'm not a big fan of the Squire logo. I know it's a Squire guitar, but I didn't like it. So I sanded it down. I ended up using some brown shoe polish and maybe some other stuff just to try to tint the headstock because it was really light and I didn't like the way it looked. And then I just went on the internet and bought a Fender Jazzmaster water slide decal. Of course, you know, if you know anything about water slides, you got to soak them for like 15 seconds or 30 seconds a minute, something like that. Then once it peels off, you just stick it on here. And then I used um, true oil, gunstock oil, and sprayed that over this to try to seal that in. And then what you can't really see in, in this video part, but I'll go ahead and take some pictures, is I ended up changing the tuning pegs to actual Fender um, vintage style tuning pegs. And they were relict, so they're basically aged looking. They feel great in the hands. Um, I did put flat wounds on this guitar because I like this guitar with flat wounds on it. I'm not a big fan of uh, round wound strings on a Jazzmaster. It just doesn't sound right to my ears. So now I'll go ahead and uh, plug it in. I'll show you a couple sounds just clean and then I'll show you my favorite sound that this guitar makes. All right, so here is the middle position, both pickups selected. I'm just gonna play some random chords. <laughs> sounds great okay we'll go ahead and go to the neck position all right has a really good sound um, Especially if you're playing something like uh, up higher on the neck, in the neck position. Alright, um, so that's kind of the clean sound. And what I'm playing through right now is a Magnatone panoramic stereo. It's two 10 inch speakers and it's over off to my left, but I'll show you a picture on the screen. and. Um, Anyway, without further ado, let's check out my pedal board, my favorite settings for this guitar specifically. And what I plan on doing over the next couple weeks is showing you some of my other modified guitars and some of my favorite tones that I get from those guitars. So let's check out the pedal board. So as you can see here, I do have a rat pedal and I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and it's on very low gain uh, or distortion rather. It's like maybe in between the first notch, like right in the middle. And then the filter is set to about, I don't know, two o'clock on the dial. And the volume is set to just past half. I'm talking like just a hair past half. 
And the amp is actually set to treble straight up in the middle, bass is at 10 o'clock, and reverb is at roughly 10 or 11 o'clock. And the volume right now is at, on the clock position would be about eight and a half or 8.30. So let's go ahead and kick this rat pedal on and I'm gonna turn the reverb on from the panoramic stereo amp. And this reverb is super, super lush. All right, so I'm gonna play it in the bridge position. This is my favorite sound of this guitar with the flat wounds. And let's just give, her, give it a run, see how it sounds. I need to practice that some more. <laughs> anyway. Yep, definitely need to practice. I think I need to slow down on the slide. Anyway, you get the deal. It sounds pretty pretty good. You know, my playing could use some practice. <laughs> um, I haven't been in a band for a really long time, but I still like to record and play some music. So um, let's see what else we can do with this. Put it in the middle position. Thank you. 
Yeah. Oops. position. This is the so-called lead switch. It's basically just going to the neck position. It's a little duller. Everything's at full, wide open. Um, So let's go ahead and turn the rat off and do a few more clean sounds with some delay, some actual tape echo that's from the Strymon 
uh, Alkapistan. middle position. Neck position. And I like how the El Capistan has that warble that you can turn up and down the tape flutter and whatnot. It actually kind of sounds like chorus slash phaser, which is pretty cool. Just an old Cure song called The Forest. Um. That's why I like the Bigsby. Um, if you actually compare a Bigsby sound to the Fender Strat or that style of tremolo, it doesn't have the same sound. I don't know what it is about Bigsby's, but I think 99% of my guitars all have Bigsby's on them. So I got my Gretsch, um, this Squire Jazzmaster that I converted into looking like a Fender Jazzmaster. Um, my Fender Telecaster has a Bigsby on it. I know, sacrilegious, but I just like Bigsby's.
And so the flat wounds, you know, flat wound strings sound a little bit duller, deader, and on this bright guitar, I think they really do fit. Uh, I'm using pyramids, and I believe these are 11s. So a little harder to bend if you're doing bendy type stuff, but if you kind of know how to play, you could just go ahead and do some slides like George Harrison used to do on his 12 string because it was also tricky to do bends on a 12 string. So instead of, you know, bending a note like up to that note, you could just go and just do these slides. Or you could just bend it. It depends how high up the neck you are. Of course, trying to bend down here on the third fret on, let's say, the G string. It's taking like all my strength just to bend that much. And then you start digging into the other strings as well. So anyway, I hope you guys like the sound of this guitar, this Magnetone uh, Panoramic Stereo Amp. Absolutely one of my favorite amps I've ever owned and played through for that matter. They're a little pricey, but you get what you pay for. It'll last a long time. It's hand wired, made here in the USA. No, I'm not sponsored by Magnetone, not with this kind of playing. But anyway, just wanted to share the tone with you and hopefully you guys get something out of this. Maybe you could turn your Squire into a faux Fender Jazz Master. Catch you in the next one, guys. Oh yeah, and one more thing. I forgot to show you guys the Panoramic Stereo's little modulation, uh, Vibra, whatever it's called. It's basically like their version of Tremolo, and it's a little more advanced than the old amps had because you can adjust the speed a lot slower, and I think even a lot, maybe faster, but I know it can go slower. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm recording this amp with one Sennheiser microphone, the 605 or 60 whatever number it is. And long story short, the amp being that it's a stereo amp, you're not going to get the full effect. Um, I just don't have another mic set up right now, but you can still hear what it sounds like. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> That's all, folks.